Hey everybody, I want to share with you something that NASA just put out. This is a composite image uh, consisting of both the visual and the infrared spectrum of the Orion Nebula, as you can see right here. And this is kind of neat for me because it gives me a chance to show you uh, once again some images from a cathedral. One in particular that I like to use is Karlskirch, which I'll show you right now. So this is the high altar of Karlskirch, and this is in Vienna, Austria. This uh, high altar was made with this uh, cloud burst. It's, it's kind of a sun in the middle, and we have a burst, and we have clouds around the outside of it. And this was produced in the 1730s. And uh, what's interesting about this is we have a few things I'm going to point out to you that we're going to see inside uh, of the Orion Nebula and uh, we're going to, we've got at least three things we can show you, possibly four, uh, that are going to point to uh, how this is a matchup. But what I want to show you real quick though is my uh, what I had come up with a long time ago in understanding what they were doing in these cathedrals and why they placed the Orion Nebula or a nebula at the very high altar area is because this represents Kabbalistically Kether. And the people that designed these cathedrals uh, were a group of Gnostics, which Timothy Hogan is aware of. One of them was called uh, uh, the Children of Solomon. And then he had another name for another group that had done these that had come from the Templars, is what he said. But uh, their, their understanding of Gnosis was, was very high because they actually were able to pull down from the cosmos, uh, not just the Orion Nebula in the visual spectrum, but they were also able to see it in the infrared spectrum as well, which means they were using some type of clairvoyance or what have you. Now, I talked to a master Kabbalist uh, that I know who is on YouTube. You may know him. His name is Rabbi Moshe Miller, and I spoke to him. And uh, he said that they were probably doing these types of things unconsciously. And I told them that that's what I had seen also because it seems like what they're doing is pull of, pulling these kind of images out of a dream state type uh, thing. So, for example, the clouds and these angels that you see on these clouds and everything, the formations of these clouds are the same as what we will see inside the Orion Nebula, but they've turned them into angels and so forth. This is exactly the kind of thing that we see in alchemical art. Uh, from the 1600s, the 1500s, and we take a look at, say, uh, Athanasius Kircher, or even if we go back and take a look in the Egyptian tombs, uh, we will see that they use uh, a form of art that also takes into account the negative spaces in the art to form a complete picture. You're going to also see this kind of thing in nature as well if you look at the trees. Now, modern psychology will call some of this type of thing pareidolia, but it's really not. In fact, it's actually image matching. It's fuzzy image matching, just like you would see if you use a fingerprint uh, or facial recognition or any kind of technology like that. And then, of course, when we apply that to the consistency of uh, repetitivity that we see in all of these cathedrals and then also what we have found as far as the Kabbalistic understanding of these things in these cathedrals we understand that Kether represents the high altar and it represents what's in the head now these cathedrals a long time ago and the temples and everything else they were actually made after the image of man because man is made in the image of God and we see this in what the Bible says but we have to understand that the Bible is written Kabbalistically as well so that's the reason they produce these temples this way we see this in Hindu temples we see this from uh, the temple of Luxor that uh, R.A. Schwaller de Lubick showed us uh, we see it in uh, the Gothic cathedrals, and we see it all up in the way until until the uh, Baroque period, and sometimes a little bit further. What's interesting about this is the nebula is always the high altar, just like we see in Amiens Cathedral as well. It is the nebula, because the nebula is the first thing. It is the prima mobile of the world of Asia, which is the world of the physical. Okay, So what we actually see here uh, is an image of Kether, but we also have to understand that this image is what is uh, the image of man's head and also an image of the solar system. And even Manly P. Hall has uh, backed us up on the idea of this understanding with the way the temples were designed. 
in the temples that were built in Greece, Egypt, in near China, and many other places, the symbolism of the solar system was built into the architecture, so that it was there in every case. The Temple of Solomon, the mysterious uh, temples of India and China were all, like the Cathedral of Christianity, solar symbols. And in these solar symbols, as in the Greek mysteries, the human being himself now plays the role of the sun. So he's told you two important things there. He's told you that the temples were designed and the solar system symbolism was built into the architecture. <clears throat> and he also said that the temples were built after man. And this is exactly what we see. And the head area, which represents Kether, the very top of the tree of life, represents the uh, first thing that comes into existence. And then from that it creates the planets and the stars and so forth. It is Kether. It's the nebula. The nebula is what creates all of the planets and the sun of the solar system. And this is the way that it works Kabbalistically on the tree of life in the world of a sea or the physical plane. So here is NASA's image. And... Uh, another thing that's interesting is when you look in these cathedrals, the way that the nebula is always turned is the nebula is turned in such a way or rotated in such a way uh, and it's consistent when you take a look at it among the cathedrals and so forth that it would look the same as if it were uh, at its highest point in the sky directly 100 degree, 180 degrees south. So that means what you're looking at right here really needs to be turned uh, 100, uh, excuse me, 90 degrees clockwise. And that would be a representation of the way the nebula would look uh, at its highest point in the sky, directly 180 degrees south. Okay, so directly south right behind us. So, uh, let's come back over here and take a look at this. Uh, this is the nebula turned. And so here it is with Carl's Kirch. Now, the person who created Carl's Kirch, this high altar, uh, would have had to have understood <clears throat> what the nebula looked like in infrared. But we can gather some characteristics, whether he understood the infrared or not, we can see that he captured the bow shock. The bow shock can be seen on both images right here the, this arc that moves around and right here that we see in this image of the high altar on uh, Carl's Kirch. Then there are other two other uh, cloud formations that can be seen. One is the one on the left side of the nebula here and that is this one. This guy right here and it's shaped like, uh, kind of like a crescent moon when you have this angel raising its arm up. This whole thing is shaped kind of like a crescent moon. And you can see this little area right here in the middle sticking up. And that corresponds to what we see right here. The same thing. And it's placed on the exact same side and location as we would expect it to be inside the nebula. So we have this, then we have the bow shock coming over, and on the other side of the bow shock, we have this guy right here. And what you'll see is you'll see this guy here leaning out. It looks like his arm is sticking out, kind of like a, an arm or a cloud, part of a cloud, which is an arm. And then you have this guy right here kneeling uh, underneath him and of course this is the same thing that we see right here so when we back out on this and take a look at both together we have our little crescent moon shape here and we have this guy leaning out with his arm. Same thing that's happening right here with this guy and her kneeling underneath. And then we have the tetragrammaton in the middle and that represents the trapezium area. And then we have the bow shock on both sides right here in the same angle. 
<clears throat> and this is what's called fuzzy image recognition. Now this pattern that you see with the crescent moon on this side and uh, this guy on the other side, this is consistent among cathedrals, whether it be Karlskirch or whether it be St. Mary's Cathedral built in the 1500s in Paris, France, or whether it be um, uh, Versailles in France also, I believe. They're all the same. They all exhibit the same qualities. But the interesting thing about it is, is this crescent moon that you see right here, this little crescent moon shape that you see here, and this cloud that you see here, uh, and this guy here, with this guy kneeling underneath, the same thing that you see right here, these can only be seen, oh, as well as St. Peter's Basilica also exhibits the same things. These clouds can only be seen in infrared. And these cathedrals were built uh, we can find uh, instances of this pattern uh, and this consistency that we see here all the way back uh, to the 1500s and infrared was not created until the 1800s so there you go or it was not discovered actually till the 1800 they didn't create a way to view it probably till after that uh, up in the S, up in the uh, sky so anyways I thought I would show that to you real quick uh, a really interesting uh, image the way that the uh, nebula kind of works um, is a lot like Egyptian hieroglyphs. Um, things are placed strategically inside all of this to give all kinds of symbolism if you know what you're looking for. Uh, and in my case, um, there have been many artists that uh, have pulled these archetypes probably from their dreams or a dream state or what have you and put them onto the canvas. It's something that I would love to have been able to talk with Carl Jung about, but he's not around anymore. It seems like uh, everybody that uh, that I respect is dead. <laughs> but anyways, I thought I would show this to you guys and just to kind of show you how this works. Uh, and there's more consistencies with this, and I can show you more as time goes on. But here we have uh, clear examples of uh, infrared being pulled out of this thing. The nebula representing the head. We see this Kabbalistically in all the various texts. Uh, uh, and then, of course, Manley Hall mentioning that the uh, cathedrals were built after the solar system and after man, so it all kind of comes together, shows you that this is exactly what we're seeing. Uh, the Orion Nebula, of course, is all over culture, from uh, the ancient Egyptians to the Mayans to the Hindu to uh, no matter where we go, even the uh, ancient Native Americans, all the way back. And we can see that this area is uh, sacred and an area that started creation. It's the seat of creation and the midst of the three hearthstones. So anyways, you guys have a great night. I'll talk to you soon.